Welcome back to another Podsme Media tutorial. I'm so glad you're here. In this video, I want to talk about DreamHost. DreamHost is the hosting company that I use and recommend. I've been an active customer since 2006, so this is not something I've just signed up for. I've used DreamHost for over 10 years. I still love and recommend them. And in this video, I want to give you an overview of what their control panel looks like because it is one of the things that sets them apart from the other hosting companies. DreamHost does use their own custom control panel, which is really popular. I believe it's won awards. So if you are looking to set up and manage your own hosting for your own website or for your clients' websites, this is definitely a great recommendation. They are affordable. They offer shared hosting, VPS hosting, and then even dedicated servers. They offer whatever you need at different price points, but their support is really great. Um, as I said, I love their control panel. It's just been an all round great experience. And to be fully transparent, I am an affiliate for DreamHost. I have been for a while, so I do recommend them to clients and friends. You'll find my affiliate link in the description below. If you click on that and sign up with DreamHost, then I'll receive a commission at no extra expense to you. I enjoy promoting products that I love and use, and I'm really grateful if you buy through my link. And if you are looking for hosting, but you don't wanna learn about all these things, and you just want someone else to manage your hosting for you, or you wanna improve the hosting of your website, then I welcome you to check out Posme Media's Managed Hosting. This is where we take care of everything for you. You can focus on growing your business while we make sure your hosting is taken care of. If that's something you're interested in, visit the page posmemedia.com forward slash manage dash hosting dash plans. I'll also leave that link in the description below. Currently, you're looking at the homepage, dreamhost.com. So let's jump in. I wanna show you the control panel. Uh, the first thing you wanna do is sign in and the web hosting control panel. Now it'll sign me in automatically because I've already signed in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna quickly go through the sidebar navigation here, explaining all the different sections, and then I'm actually gonna jump into each section and give you more details. So right at the top, we've got home and dashboard. This is the dashboard that you're looking at at the moment. Next is domains. Here you can manage your domains that you've set up on your DreamHost account. Next, you've got registrations. DreamHost also does domain registration. So here you can manage your domain registrations and you can register new domains. So next is registration transfer. If you wanna transfer any domains to a different registrar, you can do that under this section. Secure hosting lets you set up SSL certifications. This is used to securely host your site, changing your site from HTTP to HTTPS. Then remap subdirectory. I'll be honest with you, I've never used this and I'm not sure, so I'm not gonna make something up. Then anonymous FTP is another section that I've never used. Mongrel and proxy, again, I've never used the section. And then site statistics is, I believe, where you can set up statistics for your domains. But I'll be honest, I've never used statistics on the DreamHost platform. I generally use Google Analytics and I will be covering Google Analytics in future videos. Then the next section is mail. DreamHost does offer email hosting, which is something not all hosting companies provide. The service that I generally recommend is Google Apps if you're running a serious business, but if you're just getting started and if you just need a basic email hosting service, then DreamHost offers that as part of their plans. So the first section here is manage email, and this is where you can create new email addresses, you can edit email addresses, set up mailboxes, set up forward only addresses. Uh, then you have got webmail where you can actually access your mailbox through a browser. The custom MX section lets you set up records needed, for example, to host your mailboxes with Google Apps. If you, for example, register your domain with DreamHost, you can still host your mailboxes with Google Apps and this section lets you set that up correctly. Then they do have announcement lists where you can create announcement lists within the DreamHost platform. I used this many years back, but I haven't used it for a long time. Then the anti-spam section, this is where you can add spam filters and edit those filters for specific mailboxes. Then under discussion lists, this is something I used many years back as well, where you can create a list of multiple email addresses and then you can have discussions amongst each other via email. And yeah, I guess in our modern times, some people might still do that. I generally never use this. I try and keep my email to a minimum, but you can set these up on DreamHost if you so wish. Then message filters, you can set up message filters for your mailboxes and autoresponders, you can set up autoresponders. 
pretty self-explanatory. Then under the goodies section, you'll find your MySQL databases. The next section is one-click installs. I mainly use this to install WordPress and you can install a whole bunch of other web apps with a single click. Subversion, I have never used and I'm not sure, I'm not gonna lie, cron jobs, I also haven't set up any. Jabber I am, I haven't used, and then HT Access, Web Dev, and Block Spiders. All of these sections I've never really used, but it just shows you that there is a lot that you can set up if you wanna get more advanced. Moving on to DreamPress. DreamPress is a fairly new service specifically aimed at WordPress users where they will improve the performance of your WordPress site. Again, this is something that I have not made use of, but it is available. Then VPS, this is where you would manage your virtual private servers. I do not use any of these with DreamHost, but this is where you do it if you'd have them. And the same goes with dedicated servers. If you do set up dedicated servers with DreamHost, then you can manage them over here. Remixer is also a fairly new service, hence why it says new next to it. This is, I believe, a website building tool that DreamHost has launched. I have not yet played around with this, but it is something I'm looking forward to doing in a future video. Then they do have cloud services. They call them Dream Objects and Dream Compute, another service of DreamHosts that I have not used and I probably won't because I have not had the need for it thus far. Under users, this is very important. This is where you set up your different users under your DreamHost account. The next three sections, SSH keys, account privileges, and Unix groups, I've never really touched because I haven't had the need. But the options are there if you need to set up more advanced configurations. Then a billing and account, this is where you can manage your account, you can make a payment, you can view your invoices, you can manage your security, you can back up your entire account, you can obviously set up your affiliate account if you want to promote DreamHost, you can track your bandwidth usage and your disk usage. Last but not least, support. This is really important. This is where you can contact support, either via email or via live chat. I do believe they have phone support at an additional cost, but I have never made use of that. And then under data centers, you can see on which of their data centers your various digital assets are being hosted. This is extremely useful in the unlikely event if there is some kind of downtime or maintenance and they'll send out an email which data centers have been affected and you can then figure out fairly quickly if your services are being affected by the outage. And then if you look at your dashboard at the top here, you'll also have a drop down where you can manage account information, profile information, payments, and you can log out. You can access help quickly, the knowledge base, community forum, live chat, and email support. And then you've obviously got your search bar and then again, another button to contact support. So that's the quick overview. And now let's dig in a little bit deeper into some of the sections that I use regularly, just for you to see what they look like. So if we start with uh, domains, we can manage domains. Here you'll see an entire list of all your domains that you have on your account. You can add a new domain to your account or a subdomain, and you can obviously register a new domain. Here we can quickly look at an example of one of the domains. So posme.com is one of the domains I have. This shows you how much time is left on my domain registration, after which it'll most likely auto-renew because most of my domains are set to auto-renew. Uh, this might also say unknown. If you have registered the domain somewhere else but are hosting it on DreamHost, then this will say unknown. Then next you'll see that currently this domain redirects to my personal website. Uh, you'll see that HTTPS, the secure hosting is off. I have not enabled this on this domain. And then I've got 27 email addresses set up for this domain. And then here I can delete this domain from my managed domains on my account. If I click through to hosting, for example, so on this page you've got a whole bunch of additional options that I'm not gonna go into now. I will go into these options when I create a video on how to add a new domain in DreamHost. Let's now look at registrations, and this is where you can register a new domain. So if I wanna register a new domain, for example, I can hit search, and then it'll quickly tell me if that domain is available. Okay, that domain is available because it's a terrible domain and I'll never register this, but it gives me the price. I can click to register it. I've got the option to register it for a year, for two years, or three years and it also shows me what other versions of this domain are available to register. What you'll also see under registrations is a complete list of all your registered domains, and this is very useful. So if we look at the same example here, posmemedia.com, you can see the domain. Uh, this is when the domain will expire. 
then the domain is currently locked. I can manually renew it if I'd like to, and it is set to auto renew. And it tells me when it will auto renew. And currently it's set up to redirect. Under registration transfers, it's fairly straightforward. They just have the information you need to initiate a domain transfer. I'm not gonna go into all the details in this video, but I've done this before and it's really straightforward. Next, we have secure hosting. Under secure hosting, you can easily set up SSL certificates and they do offer the free Let's Encrypt SSL certificate. They also do offer a Komodo verified SSL certificate for $15 per year. The next four sections under domains, I'm gonna skip and I'm gonna jump ahead to mail. Under mail, you can manage email. On this page, you will see a breakdown of all the mailboxes that you have created. And what's really useful is you can use this filter at the top to show them. So if I wanna see posme.com email addresses, then I can click on that and click this button and it'll only show me the email addresses that I have under the domain posme.com. Here you can obviously create a new email address, you can bulk edit forwarding only addresses, and you can also obviously edit individual mailboxes and make any changes you need to make. It's all very user-friendly. Under mail, the manage email is the section I use most frequently and I'm actually gonna skip over all the other sections. If you're already a customer, or if you're gonna become a customer, then I encourage you to explore these other sections by yourself. Under goodies, the first section is MySQL databases, which will show an entire list of your host names and also your databases. This is where you can manage them, edit them, do all that good stuff. It's all fairly straightforward. Under one-click installations, you can see the web apps that they will let you install with a single click. The most interesting one here for me is WordPress, but there are a few other ones that are very popular and you can obviously use those as well. From here, I'm gonna jump over the next five sections because I don't use them very often. Again, you can explore these in your own time. Then I'm also gonna actually skip over the next five sections, the DreamPress, VPS, dedicated servers, remixer and cloud services because I don't use these very often. So I'm gonna jump straight into users and this is where you can manage your users of your DreamHost account. Here you'll see an entire list of your users. You can add a new user. It's very useful to see an overview of all your users. You can add multiple domains to the same user, but this is something that you wanna think about a bit, how you best wanna set this up. I generally like to create a new user for a new website to keep things separate. Then I'm gonna skip over the next three sections and then under billing and account, it's all fairly straightforward um, and then last but not least, support. You can contact support, and I will show you this section because this is very important. I usually use this button on the right top here, or under help, you can click on live chat, and this will open the live chat. I'm not sure if they are online at the moment. See, they are currently offline. They do not offer 24 seven chat, so they're not live 24 hours a day. My experience that I've had with their live chat has been very positive and the waiting times are generally not too bad. I have tried various other hosting providers and some of the waiting times are horrendous. I've waited more than half an hour to just have a live chat with, the, with support and, and that is just unacceptable and, and unbearable really. So that is still why I love DreamHost. Their support is really good. The other thing is you can click email support. That will take you to the support page. Under choose a topic, you will choose whatever your, your issue is that you're having, website for example, and here you can choose chat with an agent, submit a ticket, request a callback. If you click on submit a ticket, you put in your subject, you put down your problem, and you can attach a file if needed, and you can request a callback, that'll be an additional charge. I've never used the service, but it is an option. You just hit submit ticket and wait for them to reply. It's all really simple, straightforward, and Again, I must say the support has been something that I am still very impressed with and that's why I remain a DreamHost customer and that's why I recommend them to my customers and viewers. Great, so that is the DreamHost panel, quite an extensive overview. If you have any other specific questions, do leave those in the comments below. I will be making more videos like this. The hosting is obviously really important if you wanna launch and manage and run websites. And this was huge many years back for me before I had a proper hosting plan with the company. I learned about DreamHost and I created my own hosting plan and I never knew I could you know, just purchase hosting and then host all my own websites on one account. So it is a great service. I highly recommend them. Again, if you're not a DreamHost customer and you wanna sign up, I would really appreciate if you use my affiliate link. It is in the description below and I'm here to answer any of your questions. If you have any concerns, 
I'm here to help. Thanks for watching. I'm Sean Toomey from Posme Media and I'll chat to you soon. Cheers.